Praise God, everybody, and welcome back to our virtual Bible study right here in the beautiful sanctuary of First Baptist Church in Washington Hills. I first want to thank each and every one for your support. I want to thank our Facebook friends as well as our members, and even those who follow us on YouTube. I want to thank you so very much for your support. Again, I continue to ask that you continue to lift up our sick and shut in, and those who stand in the need of prayer. We don't want to forget about them. We want to continue to lift them up in prayer. Let's go to the throne of God and lift them up in prayer right now. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, and we come thanking you, Lord God, for another day, a day that we'll never see again. We thank you for a portion, reasonable portion of our health and strength. And we know, Heavenly Father, that all things work together for the good, but we pray, oh God, Lord God, that you would just continue to be with us and remind us every time we're going through some situations that it's going to work out for our good. And as we lift up our sick and shut in, we lift up Brother Edmund today. Uh, he probably went home today. He had knee replacement surgery. And we pray that you give him a speedy recovery. And Lord God, we lift up everyone who's pending surgery or pending uh, due. Sister Eddie Ruth uh, Smith, whose surgery is due in, in this month. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that life is well with us as it is. We pray for our children as they go to and forth from school and as they rise early in the morning to catch the bus in the morning. We pray that you continue to keep them safe as well. And Lord God, and, and least but not last, but we just thank you for our church members. Yes, Lord. Thank you for keeping us safe. And thank you for, for bringing us through this, this season, this year, Lord God, and as we fastly approaching the end of the year. We just want to continue to thank you and give you praise and we just lift you up that you'll continue to draw all the way to yourself. We love you and we thank you. We pray tonight that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in our sight. Oh Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, before we uh, took our Thanksgiving break, Amen. From our virtual study, we were dealing with the subject of why suffering for Christ Jesus matter. And we pulled our subject from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, and we looked over at chapter 4 of 1 Peter 1 and 3. And we came to the understanding that all Christian believers must be willing to endure the suffering that comes from following Christ. All who uh, will follow Christ are going to suffer. And so we, we don't want anyone to, to have this, this vague knowledge that they're not going to go through anything because you're a child of God. Right. That's completely nonsense. You're going to go through some things. Mm -hmm. We have an enemy out there. He's always throwing paradox at us. And that's why uh, Paul wrote to the Ephesian church and told them to put on the whole arm of God. Amen. So you may be able to stand in the evil days. But tonight, my brother and sister, instead of us continuing on in that path of why suffering for Jesus Christ uh, matters, amen, we're going to, tonight we're going to uh, look at a different approach to suffering. And this approach what we're going to look at tonight is receiving and giving comfort tonight. We, we know that we're going to go through some things. But it's so important that we help others who are actually going through the pains of suffering, whatever tribulation they are experiencing. And, 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 and one of the things that uh, the Lord put on my heart is because I saw the actions of this uh, family here as they reached out to Sister Bullock during her time. And, and just reaching out, amen, sparked her to do more than what she was just doing. So uh, just a phone call sometimes when people are going through can spark some energy in them amen they can give them give them that hope amen that they can continue to run on to see what the end is going to bring our subject tonight is going to come out of uh second corinthians chapter one verses one through seven uh, second corinthians chapter one one through seven Amen. I pray that you can see it on our flat screen as we go through here. 
Let's pick out reading up in verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in Achaia. Grace be to you, and peace from our God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in, in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And then seven, our final verse, it says, And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. Amen. Amen. Again, we're talking about receiving and giving comfort. And I found out because when, when people are suffering, it's easy for them to be selfish because of the pain they are suffering from. And suffering sometimes can bring us into a difficult place in our lives. And if you have no one to share it with, it can cause you to drip away. Amen. And, and, but in times of affliction, we need others. And not only do we need others, Amen. But we need we need we need someone. They need us. Amen. In in helping them endure the suffering that they're going through. Amen. Now you might not understand. You can say that you understand, but for for instance, if someone who's who just had a surgery and you have never had surgery, you might not understand what they're going through. But you can be there. You can be a ear to hear them. You can be there to help them. Amen. As they navigate their life, as they do their therapy to get back on their feet. I want you to notice what Romans chapter 12, 15, Romans chapter 12, verse 15 says. It says, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. And so in other words, we have an obligation Amen. In both factors, we rejoice with them when they are rejoicing, and when they are not rejoicing, if right. they are weeping, then we weep with them. This is the church way. This is the Christian way. Amen. That is the way Christians function because we are a, a family. Amen. And when one hurt, all of us hurt. Amen. You see, we belong to a large company of people. Amen. All over the world, people are. Uh, we are we're connected together. We're bound together in one body. And the head of that body is Jesus Christ. All right. And when you and I reach out to others who are experiencing time of suffering, their hearts are comfort. Amen. They, they, they know that someone cares. Amen. Can you imagine someone being at home, amen, who's going through the times of trouble and no one calls them and, and, and it's even sadder if they have kids and no one, and none of the kids come and visit them. Amen. Just in doing that pain of suffering all by themselves. So we, as Christians and a Christian family, we have an obligation to reach out to the sick and to shut in. I constantly say uh, to the church members here at Washington Hills that it's not only my duty, amen, to uh, uh, to visit with him or to pick up the phone to call them, but it's the, also their obligations as well, amen. amen, to reach out and talk with them, amen. And I understand that most times that they prefer their, their past or someone like that to come and visit with them, but all of us, we end this together, amen, and so we want to stay a knit together, a, a knit together as a family, and we want to reach out to those who are sick. Now, 
what Paul does in, in our scriptures tonight, Paul, the first thing Paul shares, amen, in verse 3, amen, he shares that we are the recipients of God's mercy. Amen. You see, God's mercy is his wonderful blessing from on high, which is always with the believers of Jesus Christ. And the sad thing about this is that someone, when someone is experiencing some type of suffering, they build walls of self-pity and resentment along with bitterness. And without God's comfort, amen, without people confident in them, amen, they can, they can enter into an emotional uh, of, of poverty, you know, they can, they can go downhill real fast. He says, he said, blessed be God. And God is a God of blessing. Amen. He said, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, He says that He is the Father of mercy. His mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Sister, Sister, I um, uh, can't, can't remember her name. Amen. And Murphy, Sister Murphy, would always say, Amen. When we, she was in a meeting, she said, Thank God for the pain. Amen. Because that lets her know that she was still alive. Right. Amen. And, and when she would pray, she would say, mercy suits her case. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we've got to understand that mercy, we got God's everlasting mercy that endures forever on our lives. Mm -hmm. Not only is he the God of mercy, he so also he's the God of all comfort. Not some comfort, but all comfort. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, the idea of of comfort implies at least two parties. One who gives the comfort and one who receives the comfort. And because you and I have been created in God's image, we have the capacity to receive and give comfort and as we live in this torn world that we live in. We live in a broken world. We live in a cursed world. Amen. And there are sin the sin cursed world. And, and, and living in this world, you're going to be faced with all kind of uh, tribulation and all kind of things you're going to see in this world. And that's what makes it so rewarding when we talk about heaven because we, that's where we want to go. Uh, our, what Sean was singing, said in his, in his song, say, heaven must be a beautiful place. And, and I believe in my heart that it is a beautiful Place. Streets are paved with gold. Amen. I, I just believe it is a beautiful place. Right. Amen. Now, now, now he says, he says, when you look at verse 3, you go in verse 3, if you slide right on into verse 4, look what verse 4 picks up. He said, he said, not only is he the God of all comfort, he said, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we also ourselves are confident of God. Now, now look what, let's break it down. Look what he's saying. He said, in all our tribulation, he comforted us in all our tribulation. He's there with us. He's a very present help in times of trouble. He said that we might be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. You see? So tribulation and times of trouble comes in our, on, on us so that we be able to help someone else. And, and look, he didn't, he didn't just uh, uh, limit it to a particular type of trouble. He said any trouble. He said by the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. You see, comfort, you know, this, this, this word comfort is like grace. It is a powerful, active gift that is supernaturally given to us from God so that we are able to endure and comfort others who are experiencing any type of trouble. And, and let me add another a sad note here in this. He said, there are many believers who do not understand why God sends comfort to aid us in time of trouble. And they really don't understand it. If some go through all the pains of suffering, amen, and they think they're all alone, that God have abandoned them. He, but he, if he allowed you to go through it, he's going to give you some comfort to help you get through it. 
And, and he, one of the phrases that you hear in Christendom, he said, if God bring you to it, he'll bring you through it. And so you just have to trust him, trust in him that he'll bring you through. This word comfort originated from the root word paraclete, which Jesus described as the Holy Spirit uh, or the comforter, by which Jesus declared won't come unless he depart back to the Father who sent him, according to St. John chapter 16, verse 7. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. He said, I ain't lying to you. I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comfort of the paraclete will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. He said, the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. He housed inside of you. Amen. You have the ability. Amen. You have this gift living inside of you. Amen. The ability to comfort others who are who down and out, are going through tribulation, who down and out in the pain and suffering. You have the ability. Oh, okay, I, I, I guess you can say you might not know what to say. But just call and say uh, how you get along. Do you need anything? You know, and just don't say, do you need anything? Just throw it out there. And, and, and because you want to be in a position where you can help. You know, maybe you say, if you need anything, if it's, if it's anything that I can do, you know, if it's something that I can do. And it might be something that you're not capable of doing. Amen. So you might have to reach out to some agency or someone else to help you, to assist you, to help that person who are in need. All right. Now the latter part, I want to go back to verse 4, Sister Sheila. The latter part of verse 4 kind of confused me a little bit. Amen. Because Paul said, by the same comfort by which we ourselves are confident of God. Amen. And when I started to break what Paul is saying in this 4, 4B, he's saying, he's saying, I discovered that Paul is saying, we have to share with God who comforted us while we were going through you see, we always have to give God the glory for what he is doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. If you want to write down the phrase, it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And that's absolutely true. Because if it had not been for him being with you while you're going through it, amen, you wouldn't have been able to endure the pain, amen, of suffering, of pain, of, of, of suffering. Amen. amen. So we got the shelf of the who it is that have brought us through. Amen. 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 Now, what, what Paul does, and, and I might be going a little bit fast for you, but what Paul does, he confirms, he always confirms what he shares with the next verse. Notice what he confirms. And in fact, he says, For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a two-edged sword here in which he's saying that our suffering, we, we suffer because we are followers of Christ. Right. And, and, and because we're suffering with Christ, he is also our consolation. Amen. He also comfort us so that we can comfort others who are actually going through it. You see, you see, and this is some knowledge, this knowledge that we, this revelation knowledge that we share with you tonight. It's the same knowledge, revelation knowledge, that you can share with others who's down and out, who's going through the pain of suffering. Amen. Amen. So, so my friends, actually, what he's actually saying here, he, he's warning us, those of us who are actually followers of Jesus Christ. And those of us who are following of Jesus Christ, we got to arm ourselves, amen, with the same and on ourselves because the same suffering that Jesus suffered, we also is going to suffer as well. Amen. He says this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Right? He said, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself. You're going to go, you're going to be afflicted, you're going to go through something down here. Amen. I mean, well, if you're not going through anything, everything is okie dokie. Amen. And you, no one is accusing you of anything. Life is beautiful. Amen. Then the question, whether or not they see you as a threat to the uh, kingdom of darkness. 
Amen. He said, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, knowing this, knowing this, that something going to come my way because I'm a follower of Christ. For he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. You understand what, what he's saying? You haven't stopped sinning, but what you stop accusing God or sort of uh, 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 being bitter and, and, and all of this thing, going through all of this type of thing because suffering have come your way. You accept what happens to you because you know that God have allowed the suffering or the trouble to come your way. And if God have allowed trouble to come your way, it's not to destroy you, but to build you up. Amen. 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 God always have a purpose and a plan for your life. Whenever he, he brings something your way, it's a, he have a purpose and a plan for it, not just to because he just want to bring it in your life. No, he want to build you up. Amen. Amen. Now the reason... Why receiving a given comfort uh, becomes an important factor in the Christian walk. Amen. Because Christians today don't expect suffering. Amen. And, and they don't, they, they can't tolerate it. And when it does occur in their life, amen, and they, they expect instant results. You, you, I guess maybe maybe the, 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 the religious community or the church community have misled people, amen, to understand that you can have the, you can have your cure instantly. Maybe they have watched people on TV right. and how they've been cured on TV, amen, or whatever, you know, they, be, but they don't always get a cure instantly. Amen. amen. You talk with some people who, who've been diagnosed with cancer. They go through the whole gamut of radiation. They go through all of that, amen. To get to the end of it, amen, when there's no trace of it. But they suffered through it. Burns, loss of hair, they would go through all of that. Amen. But they are strong, they're going through it. Why? Because they are fighting for their life. Amen. Because they are not allowing cancer to take over their life. Amen. One of the first things that happened to a person who has been diagnosed with cancer, it affects their mind. Because there's so many have been diagnosed with cancer and have died. Right. And so when, you, when someone diagnosed with cancer, they think this is a, a sentence for death. Don't have to be. Amen. Amen. You just put it in God's hand and, and allow God to use the medical professionals, amen, to do what they do. Amen. You just totally depend on God. Amen. And God will bring you through. Amen. amen. God allows, again, God allows Amen. Suffering to come our way. Amen. Not to destroy you, but to build you up. Amen. amen. This is what First, First Peter 4.16 says this. Notice what he said. This is very important. I didn't hit it in the last time. He said, if any man, if any man, and he using the masculine tense, amen, but if any human being right. suffer as a Christian, yeah. let him not be ashamed, amen. but let him glory God. Glorify God on this behalf. Amen. Amen. Just give praise to God. Now, I, I, I was talking to a young lady. Actually, she's a member here at the church. And she's always lifting up God. Amen. She always lifted up God. And she, she, she was not ashamed. Amen. She didn't cover her head up. Amen. She wasn't ashamed. Amen. What the, what the chemo have done. She wasn't ashamed. She always lifted up God. And this is what this verse is saying. He said, if any man suffered as Christian, he said, let him not be ashamed. You know God has allowed this to come upon you. Don't be ashamed, but glorify God in, in this behalf. Amen. Amen. Paul goes, he goes a little bit deeper. He goes deeper in this in encouragement for the believers to receive. Amen. And to, and to give comfort. He said in verse 6, whether we be afflicted for your consolation of salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering. <laughs> amen. He always has, he has his keynote scripture. He always comes, amen, to clarify what he says in the previous verse. Let me read that same verse, verse 6, in a different translation, which says, when we are weighed down with trouble, it is for your benefit and salvation. But when God comfort us, it is so that we in turn can be an encouragement to others and then patiently endure. Amen. Amen. 
if you if if you ever if you ever just go with somebody, well, know that be say, let me take that from the record. If, when you go to an AA meeting, they say you got to admit that you got a problem, right? Amen. And one of the 12 steps, out of one of them 12 steps, amen, you have to go to someone who you have did something to and you got to seek forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then there's one step, one step there is to help someone else, amen, along the way. And, and, and this is kind of therapeutic to you, for you, if you're helping someone else who's actually, who was an alcoholic. So you're helping them, amen, as they're uh, on their way of sobriety, amen. So this is the same way. You see, whether we be afflicted is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the doing of the same suffering, which we also, he said, he, it is for our benefit. Not only for our benefit, but for our salvation. And when God comforts us, it's also so that we can turn around and comfort or encourage someone else. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing that everything that God does for us or allow it to come upon us is for our good? He turns it for our good so that he can be glorified in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. God seeks for us to glorify him in everything. In other words, in this life we in other words, in this life we're gonna suffer. Amen. We're gonna face all kinds of trials. But 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 be a good cheer, amen. Because we're never, 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 ever alone while we're going through our trials and tribulation. Jesus said, in this world you're gonna face all kinds of tribulation. But he says that he said, be a good cheer. Be a good cheer. Amen. Because he has overcome them all. Amen? Amen. Despite of all the trouble and the world of suffering that you and I might face, some, some of you are watching us, me tonight, perhaps in that predicament right now. Amen. Amen. But just know that you are not alone in what you're going through. He, he promised you that he's never going to leave you. He promised you that he's never going to forsake you. Right. He's there with you. Right. Receive it. Amen. And now that you receive it, amen, seek to help someone else who is going through it. Amen. Amen. He always there for you. And then finally in verse 7, uh, Paul gives us this hope. He said, our hope of you is steadfast. And he, he's reaching out to the Corinthian church. He said, our hope of you is steadfast. He said, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering. He, he, he's so confident that the Corinthian church is not going to fall away. They, 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 they're not going to give up, throw their hands up. He said he has this confidence. He said knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you also be of consolation. He said, even though, he said, I know that you're going through some suffering, but I even know that you're going to be, you're going to comfort someone else. I, I like to end uh, this, this lesson tonight knowing, amen, suggesting to you uh, that when you're going through it, I, I pray that you comfort someone else. Amen. Amen. Just flip it. Amen. Just flip it. Amen. And start comforting someone else. Amen. And when someone call you and, 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 and ask you how you're doing, give God the praise. Amen. amen. Don't look at your pain. Amen. Look towards heaven high. Amen. Who God who allowed this to come upon your body. And when you start looking away from your situation and start looking up towards heaven, amen, where God sits on, where Jesus sits on the right hand side of the master, amen, you, you begin to uh, take your mind off of you. Your pain will begin to ease away. And then if you have a chance and you've been through it and you're on the other end of it, and you know somebody who's actually has began to go through it. You give them a call. You tell them who brought you through. Amen. Amen. You, you always lift God up and give them glory. Amen. And, and why you make that connection with them? Then just have a small prayer, a, a just quick prayer. You don't have to do a long prayer with them. Just a quick prayer. Because God understands their heart. He knows more about them and you than you know about yourself. Amen. Amen. And as you connect with them 
And as you encourage them, and as you bring God in the center of all of the pain and the suffering that your friend or loved one are going through, God began to ease them away from the pain. Amen? And perhaps the healing process can begin because they're taking their eyes off the pain, off of their circumstances, and began to look towards God. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for placing on my heart this subject tonight, receiving and giving comfort. There's so many have comforted me during my times of sickness and when I'm down and out. So many have comforted me. And Lord, in return, I want to help comfort someone else. I thank you, Lord, for the divine Holy Spirit that house in all who believe in Jesus Christ. All of us have the ability to comfort someone. Because scripture, Lord God, tells us, and I'm standing on that, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And so, Lord God, as we stand on that truth, Lord God, we pray that those who would visit with us and tune in with us, we pray that they would take this tool of receiving and giving comfort and share with others that God is with them even through the pain that they are experiencing today. Lord God, we pray, continue to lift up those that are sick and shut in. Continue to thank you for keeping Washington Hills in your keeping care. Thank you for your divine covering. And Father, when we come back here Sunday and we partake in the Lord's Supper, yeah. Lord God, we want to lift you up. Christ-centered, Lord God, and let the world know. If it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.